Yo, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? This is your coach, Renz, and today, yes, I'm breaking what I said that I was only gonna do a part one to how to define how to find your divine soulmate because I wanted you guys to take the time to focus on just you first. That the first part of this video was really about you finding yourself, that you saying I do to yourself, that you being loyal first to yourself. Let me tell you why that's so important. That is so important because I was having a discussion today and I've had a discussion with a couple of people over the week and in those discussions there are multiple couples that I'm dealing with right now or one I just know of and the situation is thus. They're married to people who are perfectly happy with the way things are in that relationship right now. But the woman in most cases is loyal and she's completely unhappy. She is loyal to a fault because she is loyal to everybody else first before herself. She's loyal to the husband, she's loyal to the kids, she's loyal to the church, she's loyal to the structure of America, she's loyal to traditions, she's loyal to her parents, she's loyal to what other people may think. She's loyal to everybody else first instead of herself. So she's living her life, they are living their lives in misery, knowing that they want the relationship to change, but because the other person is perfectly happy with the way the relationship is and knows that even though they can have their arguments here and there, the other person is not going anywhere because they're loyal to a fault. So they'll find themselves spending year after year after year after year unhappy. Why? Because they have no loyalty to themselves. This is why I didn't want to do this first, this second video, because I didn't want people just jumping to finding the guy, finding the girl. I want you first to find yourself. So please, please, I implore you, if you haven't seen the first one of how to find how to find your divine soulmate, go back to that one. Go back and look at that one. If this is on Facebook, go and scroll in my videos and find it. If you're on YouTube, scroll up my channel and find it. But go look at that first because you need to say I do to yourself before you say I do to somebody else because they may, they may not match up with you and then you'll find yourself in a situation where you're being loyal to somebody before you're being loyal to yourself all right because I don't believe that all match all matches were made in heaven they weren't I know plenty that were made in hell and you may be in one of those and you need to be able to recognize that and move on with your life because there's, and then when you look at that person, you'll realize you won't be able to hold on to the fear, the guilt, or the shame of it. So move over to the other video and watch that one so that you don't fall into that trap. Now, for those of you who are, who seen that one and you are working on that, let me go ahead and give you the seven things you should be looking at, the concepts, the ideas, the thought process you're looking at when you meet someone. Now within each one of these, and you need to understand something, that there are, there are multiple levels of each one. We won't go through all of the levels, but there are multiple levels of each one. And in looking at those levels, know this, that you could probably sit down and write out 10 different items that would fit under each one of these. But understand that only about two or three make up 80% of the happiness, the joy, the completeness in that category. This is the 80-20 rule, that 20% creates 80% of the results. It's usually, the, and basically it's the idea that the smaller amount creates the larger result. So it could be 30, 10, 70, it could be 40, 60, it could be 20, 80, 10, 90, but it's usually the smaller number makes up the larger portion of the result. So as I go through these, recognize and keep that in mind at all times, okay? That there may be a lot that you can put in there, but find out what the real important ones are. So the first thing that you should look at when trying to discover your divine soulmate is number one, does your life purpose match? Does your big idea match? Does the big picture, the big plan match? Let me give you an example. A couple years ago, I was on the dating scene, single, looking for a woman, and saw this woman, She's beautiful. She was elegant, intelligent. She was like fine. So as we had our first conversation, oh, we got a lot in common. Then we had our second conversation, ooh, even more in common. Then in our third conversation, we started talking about lifestyle and how you want to live. I expressed the fact that by the time, a couple of years after my son graduates, which he graduates in two years, I want to live the life of a vagabond. I want to live the life where I am coaching, mentoring, speaking, writing, 
but I am living in other countries doing it, living in a country for three to five years and then move on to the next country. I have a personality where I want to immerse myself in other cultures and countries. I want to go to Spain and live as a Spaniard. I want to go to Nigeria and live as a Nigerian. I want to go to Egypt and live as an Egyptian. Go to Australia, live as an Australian. I want to get deep into the culture of, of the people in a different country, shed my Americanism and go and live as a Peruvian. You know, this is what I, how I envision my life in the next six to seven years of just doing that for the rest of my life. And I don't know, maybe my goal changed. But this young lady, hers was totally different. She had just finished a process that would allow her to be a surgical nurse for some, a neuroscience surgical nurse at Emory University or something like that. And this is something she had been working for for like decades. She got there, she's done it, and she's never owned a house. And she wanted to buy a house and settle in to Atlanta. Big picture don't match. That's a major big picture that doesn't match. We're not talking about do you want to, 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 to skydive. You know, we're not talking about do you like going fishing. We're talking about a major big picture issue that we just didn't match on. And because of that, we both recognize that we're not suited for one another. So you have to be able to find your big picture things. You have to figure out those two and few big picture issues. And I know through this whole thing, you're gonna think about being equally yoked. I generally don't like that term because that term usually people only mean religious. Are you religiously equally yoked? Or they'll mean religious and financial. But equally yoked is really what this whole thing is about. But it's about equally being equally yoked in so many categories. Not just color, black, white, not just country, nationalities, not just financials, not just sex, not just religion. That you gotta be equally yoked in a bunch of things. And even within religion, some of y'all up here in religion, some of y'all right there, some down here, some over there, some, over, you know, it's a lot, but that big picture makes a difference. So find the two and few things. So maybe it is religion, finance, and sex. Maybe it is race, um, culture, and nationality. Whatever those things are, figure them out. And by figuring those out, though, what's vitally important to you, you find somebody else where they have that similarity. Now, you don't have to be exactly the same, but similar enough. Number two, do you see eye to eye with each other intellectually? Are you an intellectual match? This, again, don't have to be perfect. But if you're a 10 intellectually, this person's a two. It's not gonna work. This person over here will always feel resentment for you. That resentment can be displayed in anger. It can be displayed in stubbornness. It can, it can be displayed in, 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 in inferiority complex. It can be displayed as becoming an introverted or, or overly extroverted. Uh, I've seen it where a person literally has said that I argue my point because sometimes I just want to be right. Not intellectually matched. Now, and here's the thing. Intellectually matching doesn't necessarily, it's, it's not necessarily broad. It can be specific. You see, if a person comes and talks to me, as far as spirituality and, and ancient and ancient religions, cult, uh, religions and culture and history and current religions, cultures and history, I am incredibly astute in those areas. But let's say we were talking about, well, no, I'm a student at too. <laughs> Let's say we were just talking about something that I'm not as intelligent in, whatever it is, then that person, because I am a nerd, okay? I just go ahead and admit it. I'm, an, I'm a nerd. I love being a nerd. I study tons of things. Um, but, you know, I, I, but let's say there was a person who was very astute in another area that I'm, I've yet to discover or have interest in studying, and that person would, would dust me. Now, it's fine. But it depends on how important that issue is. You see, certain issues are more important than others because that's where you're, where you're spending your time intellectually. You have to ask that question. What are the people that the people that you hang around, the people you are in contact with? Um, how do you spend your time with those people? Do you spend a lot of time? You see, if, if I marry somebody who was a neurosurgeon, I, I don't have to, if we're not spending a whole lot of time at, at medical seminars and meetings and with doctors and all that kind of stuff, I don't have to be as intelligent in as they do. I could be a four and they could be a 10 and we're fine. 
But let's say we, I'm this person, they're very much into art and I'm not, right? Let's say I wasn't. And they're deep into all the great artists over the years and sculptors and painters and all these people. But I'm just kind of like ignorant of it all. But we're spending loads of time in that category, going to museums, in different clubs, painting, doing all this stuff like that embodies a tremendous amount of our time. I'm going to feel some kind of way about it. I'm going to feel left out about it. And let's say I don't want to learn about it. I have no interest in learning. Then that's going to be an issue. So we have to be mindful of are we intellectually matched in the areas that is, that we're, that's important to each one of us that's going to take up a, a ton of our time. Uh, I know a couple that he is so sport oriented, caught up in sport, can name stats that people don't even know exist stats and she could care less but he wants to talk about sports all the time watch sports all the time go to sports bars go to the trivia nights and do all this stuff he's a fantasy league everything guy they struggle to have conversation find your intellectual match the next one physical energy match are you active or are you sedative are you adventurous or are you you know, safety oriented, you know, risk averse. Are you nature or are you city? Are you farm girl or are you city girl? You know, what's the, what, what, what is your activity level? You know, I, I, I have been with a person who believed that you worked all week, that then you can only go out on Saturday because Friday used to work Friday, so you tied Friday. And you only go out on Saturday. And then Sunday is a rest day in order to get ready for Monday. I am a, it's Tuesday. There's an event. Get off work, let's go. It's Wednesday. And in Atlanta at TGI Fridays down to Camp Creek, they had the motorcycle jump off. We had three, 400 motorcycles down there. It's time for me to go down there on Wednesday night when the weather's good. It's Thursday night. I haven't seen Planet of the Apes yet. Time to go to the movies. So for me, it doesn't matter. I don't care about day or week. That's time created by man. I don't care about time, about the day. I'm very active. I like going and doing, going and doing. And as you can tell by me making these videos, I like running my mouth. So <laughs> the activity, I like being in social environments. Let's say you got a person who doesn't like being in social environments. They rather just be alone, just the two of you all the time. Don't want to see anybody else. And hopefully they're not crazy possessive and beating you, but because that's an uh, uh, indicator of that. But you have to make sure that your physical energy levels are similar. Because if you've got a person who's already tired, always tired, and this other person's always active, you're going to have problems. If this person always wants to sleep and this person always wants to go, 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 you're going to have a problem. Now, you get two sleepy people together, they're good. You get two active people together, they're good. You get two people who like doing all the crazy, you know, bungee jump, jump out of the plane, base dive, um, snorkeling, all that stuff, you're good. So you have to ensure that the person, you and that person have the same activity level. And you gotta be mindful because some people when they're single, oh, their activity level is up. They're out. But then when they get into a relationship, they slow it down, settle down. You know, I was describing to a young lady that I was coaching. I said that, you know, Based on her, her personality, she needs the kind of guy who's willing to drive across town just to hug her and kiss her and turn around and go back. Because to her, that warms her heart, but then that's the activity level of a man that she needs. So, a guy who thinks that that is not wasted time. So, understand, there is some other levels, depth, depth to the activity level. What type of activities, right? So, you both can be active, but what type of activities? And what do those activities mean? You both could be sedentary, but what type of sedentary activities? Because you could both like sitting there watching TV, but I don't watch scary movies. Not gonna happen. I don't, I don't like all that jump scare stuff. No. So uh, what 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 are we watching? You know. So you have to figure it out what's most important in the categories of sedentary or active or whatever your level of because super active, sleepy dead sedentary. There are so many levels in between. Okay. The next one is, can you share your deepest thoughts and desires with this person? Now, this is very, 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 very vital. Now, mind you, I'm going from the top down. You should be looking at the person from this down. Check off big, big picture. Check off intellectual contact because you want to get those things squared away before you get to these next levels, which is 
heart. Can you share your deepest thoughts and desires with this person? Can you trust them with your deepest thoughts? I'm going to tell you guys something. Don't tell nobody, right? I have this thought that comes into my head quite often, pretty much every day. I could be driving down the street, walking down the street, sitting inside my store, sitting inside of uh, an office. If I see someone bending over to pick something up, there is something in my head that makes me want to go over to them and push them over. I don't know why. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But there is something that makes me want to push them over. Every time I see somebody leaning over, bending over, picking up something, I see a, I saw a lady, and, and here's the thing. I was in my store the other day, and this lady, she gets out of the car. She got, there's a young ch child in the back. She leans over to pick up something off the ground. The child opens the door, and the door hits her in the butt, and she almost falls over. I found that funny. I know, it's so horrible, and I should be flogged. I get it. But... You should be able to tell a person your deepest, darkest secrets and not feel judged by it. Now, I tell you guys that one because I don't really care about that one. But there are some other things about me that I would never tell you because I don't know you. I don't know you like that. I'm not trusting you like that. There are some things about me that if I told you, you'd be like, that dude, crazy. But there are some things about everybody. That, some, that the next person will say, dang, she crazy. Man, he crazy. He needs to be locked up. That's sadistic. I can't believe that. I don't want to be around somebody who thinks that way. But you have to be with somebody that you can trust to tell you things. I've had people who trusted me enough, you know, to tell me about their abortions. Women who've told me about adoptions, who've told me about being raped. I had men, men who trusted me enough to tell me about being sexually abused and raped, you know, as in, in their youth and even as adults, you know, who have suffered through some pretty horrendous things. You know, I've had people who trusted me enough to tell me some of the craziest things in there that they have went through because they know that I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to say that you are subhuman now, that you should be locked away because I recognize the fact that you're telling me is that you trust me. The fact that you're telling me is that you want to maintain or gain some level of control over it where it has may have been or is trying to control you. That person that you're dedicating the rest of your life to, you need to be able to trust them in that format. If you cannot trust them to open yourself up and tell them the deepest, darkest secrets and desires that you have, that person is not for you. That is not what I like to call your unicorn. That is not your divine soulmate. You have to be able to trust them in that one. Moving on to something a little bit lighter to the next one. Do you feel friendship and love with that person? Can you be yourself? Can you be you? If you are silly as hell, can you be silly as hell with them? I'm corny, all right? I am. I'm corny. I make corny jokes. Can I be corny with you? Can I, you know, be affectionate with you? Can I be a sarcastic? Can I be a goofball? Can I be whatever those things are? Whatever you are, can you be that with, the, with, with that person? Can you just be you? Can you, if you like to dress funky, can you dress funky? If you like to dress in cosplay, can you dress cosplay? You know, whatever it is that you are, can you be yourself? You know, if... If you are, you know, if if you're a black guy and you like folk music, it's not a lot of black people that like folk music I've ever met. Can you be open about the fact that you like folk music and go and, and you know do it? Can you can you can you go do the folk music thing without being judged, without them saying that, oh my god, you're crazy. Can you be yourself? So you should be able to be you. And do you have a friendship within that relationship where you know that's your friend, right? Because if you're able to tell them your deepest, darkest secret, that should be your friend. That should be somebody you trust. And y'all should have that friendship, though, where y'all can laugh and joke. You know, I used to, I, I had a friend, right? I had a friend, and it didn't matter where we were, what we was doing, how much money we had, how much money we didn't have. We could always have fun, right? We could have fun in any situation. That's a friend where you can always have fun and joy and, be, and no matter what the situation is, you can have fun. 
So you gotta be able to have that kind of friendship, right? So that you can just be you. You just need to be you. And they be fine with that. And you're fine with it. And the only thing you have to worry about is becoming a greater version of yourself. When all you have to do is be a greater version of yourself, how much growth can you have in that relationship? That's a lot of growth you can have when you just be coming. And how easy is it? How easy is it? People like to say that marriage is hard work. No, marriage is work, but it shouldn't be hard work. Because marriage should be you just being a greater version of yourself. If you got to be a greater version of something else that's not you, then yeah, that's going to be hard work. So you should just have to be a greater version of yourself. So can you be you? The next one, are you stronger together or do you magnify one another? Like I said, I haven't seen Planet of the Apes plan on going to see it, but if you saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes, what did he say? Eight separate, weak, eight together, strong. Are you stronger together? Do that, does that person magnify? Do they make you greater? You know, Napoleon conquered Europe when he had Josephine. When he got rid of Josephine, he was weaker and he lost Europe. Dr. King was an amazing man. He had Coretta. She magnified him and made him stronger. You understand what I'm saying? When you have that right, that per, that divine soulmate, you become they they make you stronger. They make you a better person. They they give you what you need in order for you to be magnified and those parts of you that has been dormant, they explode out. You know, right now in my life, I don't have this ball of pent up, this this pent up energy, right? You know, like y'all can't see it, but I'm like hitting myself in the chest. I have this ball, I had this ball. But for years of a relationship I was in, I had this pent up ball of power, right? And it just couldn't come out. It, it, I, I, I even went and we was in some, in, in, in some group programs and I was like, there's this ball of power that I'm trying to release and I'm just not able to get it out. You see, every person, whether they want to admit it or not, you may be amazing on your own. You may accomplish things on your own that's far greater than most people. But there is a person out there that if you got that person in your life, whoo, the amount of power that you will have then, the amount of you that will be magnified to the level that you achieve things that you be like, God, dog, I know I didn't, we didn't have that in me. Where the heck that came from? It got to be the fact of what I got with me. That woman, that man that is in my life that right now, Woo, they magnify me. They, they, they allow me to release that power that we are so strong together. That is the true power couple. But understand how you got to have all those other things in line in order to have that. So when you don't have those things in line, it's pent up power. So you need to have, that. does that person magnify you? Do they give you that power, that ability to have that power to release it? To release all of you all over everybody. Can you do that? Do they give you that? Okay. So do they make you stronger? Are you stronger together than you would be on your own? The next thing, we're almost done. Thank you for being with me this long. The next thing is, is there harmony in your external relationships? This is family and friends, coworkers, the whole nine. Are, is there some level of harmony? You see, these are outside people who are in, involved in that person's life. They're outside people involved in your life. Those outside influences, can, they will influence you. I know people say that you keep your marital business, you keep your relationship business out of the street. You don't tell, and you don't. You don't tell your, your, your mother, your father, your, your cousin, brother, and them all the negative things that your spouse is doing, and then you're gonna stay with them because they're gonna hold on to all that negative stuff and always remind you. They're not gonna forgive and forget. They're gonna keep it. They're gonna always remind you. So you, yes, you keep that to yourself unless it's harming you and you need escape, you keep it. But in every other aspect, they need to have at least a cordial, at least a good friendly relationship with the people that you're spending the majority of your time with. Because if you don't, those outside influences are gonna be pulling you this way. While this person who you're with is pulling you that way. And if you're getting pulled both ways, eventually you're strung out and when you're strung out and you can't take no more, you're gonna die on your cross. 
So you need to be strong. You need to make sure that the people around you, one of my favorite couples in the world, if you've seen some of my other relationship videos, I talk about Brandon and Angela a lot, but one of my favorite couples in the world, one of the things that they say is that his friends are my friends. That's what Angela says. And what Brandon says is her friends are my friends. You see, they don't have separate friends. Their friends are their friends. They don't have, now I'm not saying she can't go out with the girls, she does. He can't go out with the boys, he does. But she know the boys, he know the girls. They ain't all, you know, but they can come over to the house and everybody's cool, everybody's fine, you know. That's how it, you're supposed to be. That's how you should be. I ain't gonna say supposed to. That's how you should be. Hell, that's how you need to be. <laughs> so y'all, you, you have to have that shared family. They say it takes a village to raise a kid, but it takes a village to maintain a relationship as well. Because a relationship affects a lot of people. So we need to make sure that those people are in harmony, you know, with what y'all are doing, what your accomplishments are. And I think if you if you got all these other things in line, th those other people will. They, will. they should come in line. If they don't, then they got a problem. And they may be jealous or maybe, you know, insecurities, but they got the problem, not you and not him or not her. So, you know. Um, but you want to make sure that you have harmony in your external relationships. And then this last one, number seven, making love and sexual equals. Intimacy and sexual equals. You got to be that. If you're not sexual or intimacy equals, you're going to have some major problems. All this other stuff could be in line. But this is why that book of wisdom says uh, the the the. the the wife body is not her own, the male body is not his own, and do not deny each other except for an agreed upon, agreed upon time of, of fasting and prayer. And But don't let that be too long or otherwise you let your temptation in. Like I said, I don't ascribe to that book 100%, but there are jewels of wisdom all throughout it. And that, when it comes to relationship, is a jewel of wisdom. You need to make sure that your intimacy levels are the same because when they're not, then you will allow temptation to come in. All right, you'll allow temptation to come in. And it's not always about the one thing. You see, some people think that that intimacy level, as long as I, long as I give him, I've had women who say, as long as I give him some every night, we should be good. No, it's not just the fact you give him some, but what are you giving him? How is, are you being, how is it being given? What is the intimacy level of what's being given? Those things does make a difference to guys, women. I'm trying to tell y'all, listen to a dude when he's talking about a dude. We do connect with how. If you giving it to us is like a chore, we recognize the chore and then we don't feel wanted. And guess what he does? He go find that chick who wants him, who makes him feel wanted. Because that is the true root of what he wanted, is to feel wanted. Dudes. She want to be put in the mood. She want to be romance. You got to romance her stone. You need to, she wants that, how you doing, how's your day? She wants you to call her. Baby, you having a good day? She wants you to, when she come home, you know, I decided to run a bath for you and put some little whatever, some, some, some lavender and silk in that water. She wants you to do those things. She wants you to come home and you done cleaned up the kitchen, right? You done cleaned the whole house. You done made the bed. You done did the laundry. She want, you know, she want, even, even if she a housewife, she want to know that, let me tell y'all something. Some of you men may think I'm a punk. I don't care. But my first wife, my kid's mother, great friendship, great relationship. And I told you guys before, I messed that up. I, I, even though we both had our part to play, I will take 100% responsibility for that relationship. But one of the things that I found hilarious, me and her were talking probably about six weeks after we broke up. And we've always maintained a great, friendly relationship with one another since then. But we was cracking up because she told me that she almost ran out of gas. Then she told me she got to the gas station and she was sitting there for a minute. And then she realized, oh, I got to get the gas. Then when she went up to the gas pump, she had to figure it out. Because she hadn't done it in 17 years all pretty much. Yeah. And for about 17 years, she hadn't went to the gas station because I would just go on Sunday and then check again on Thursday fill up the tank. She hadn't pumped gas because I was going and I was filling it up and then we were together, I would get out and I'd fill up the tank. She hadn't dealt with the machines and, and I'm 45 so the machines have changed drastically since we was in high school because 
we were married for 17 years. We started dating in high school, but she hadn't done that in a long time. So it was, it was, you know, it was like, like a, oh dang, I gotta pump my own gas. She forgot that she had to pump on gas, which is why she sat in the car for a few minutes. And we laughed about it. But there are certain things that she hadn't done in so long, or rarely done, that it was like, oh dang, I gotta do all of this for myself. Trust me, your woman will love it if you are taking care of her like that. Women like to be taken care of like that. Even the most independent woman. There are certain things, it may not be the same thing that this woman, but she like these things, that, and, and that is taking care of her, right? So you figure those things out, and that's the other part. We got to learn each other. See, the making love and the intimacy is not about, well, you know, this is what I did with, with such and such, and, and, and she enjoyed it. Well, that was such and such, and you ain't with such and such no more. Now you with this chick over here. You need to do learn her. And ladies, it's like, well, you know, I used to cook this for Rilo. And with Rilo, he like when I make the beans and the rice and with the hog mold and all, whatever it is. But you need to recognize that this ain't Rilo, all right? This ain't Rallo, this Jessup. Jessup don't like your, your, your hog mog and his greens and his beans. So you, I don't even know what hog mog is, but you know, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? You gotta learn the new person. You gotta see what, what is their intimacy level? What is intimacy to this woman, to this man? All right, and, and are you equal in it? Do you have to, like, it's all right to learn and then become accommodated, but is it something you don't mind learning? What is the sexual equal? You know, if a person, if this person likes oral and this person doesn't like oral, y'all gonna have an oral problem because y'all gonna have a lot of arguments, all right? So do they like it or do they not? How do they like it? Are you willing to learn to do it in a way that they like it? What kind of, how much contact can they handle? Direct contact, light contact? You need to know these things. You know, what is foreplay to them? Is there foreplay? Is there not? Is there spont spontaneity or does it need to be planned? Do you like to do some cosplay? Do you don't want to do cosplay? What What is it that you like and they like and does it match up? Because if it doesn't, and trust me, you have these conversations. This can just start out as a conversation. I ain't saying you got to try it first. This is a conversation. And eventually, yeah, you're going to have to try it because action speaks loud and words. Because trust me, many people will say, yeah, I like doing this. And yeah, I can do that and I can do this and, uh, and I'm this and I'm that. But guess what? You get into the real situation, and it's like, nah, bro, you lied. You straight lied. That ain't you. That ain't you. You had me thinking it was you, but it's not you. No, not you. You. Or they are exactly what it is, and you're like, yeah, you. <laughs> Good job. So you need to find that out with, um, first verbally, verbally, and then see the action. And both ladies and men, see the action, all right? Just because a guy says that he pumps all the gas, watch him. Does he do it? He says he's chivalrous. Is he chivalrous in his actions? Okay, watch, watch. You know, with me, you can look at my son. If you see, what you see my son do, you best believe that's what I'm doing. Because he opens the doors for his sisters, he opens the doors for his mother, he takes care of them, right? And my daughters, they take care of his, they take care of his little big head self. A little too much, but they take care of his little big head self because they've watched their mother, right? So watch a man, watch a woman, see how they are, see how they respond, see their actions. But you've got to be equally matched when it comes to intimacy and sexuality because like that piece of wisdom says, if you don't, then you're allowing for temptation to come in because that other man may give her the emotional shoulder that she's looking for from you. That other man may give her that emotional support. If you watch one of the honeypot videos about having a work husband or a work wife, that's a hell no. That's a hell no. That is the surest way to, f to have infidelity, emotional infidelity and physical infidelity within your relationship, which will destroy all the other things in there. Imagine building up all these other aspects of the relationship and you let it get destroyed because you're tired. You let it get destroyed because you don't feel like picking up that card while you was in the line at Walgreens anyway. You let it get destroyed because you you, you don't, your, your, your mom and them told you that that's what nasty women do. Or you let it get destroyed because you a dude and you say, I don't want my wife to do that because that's what nasty women do. You know, you let that get destroyed because of some 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 programming. Or now, if you just don't like it, if you just don't match, then find out before you get committed. And that's what all these things, guys. Find out before you get committed. 
before you lay it down and say, this is wife, this is husband, find this out first. Before you get so emotionally attached that you are, you are, are um, not respecting yourself, that you are loyal to a fault, get this information. And I know some of these things you don't get until you get deep in. And when you find out, you, you start to make excuses because I know it hurts and you don't want to start over. And it's like, I'm tired. I'm tired of starting over. But here's the thing. I'm 45 right now. Let's say I'm not married again until I'm 50, right? People today are living to be 100, 101, 105, 110, 120. Dude, that's 50 to 70 more years of being in total bliss. It's worth it. It's worth it. I always mess with my son and I say, I'm going to live 300 years. And I believe that. And, if I li- and when I live 300 years... Find my soulmate at 50, 60, 70. Psst, I'm gonna live 300 years. Who cares? That's plenty of time to spend with them. So don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. Look at these things. You know, does your life, does the big picture, does your life go purpose line up? Do you see eye to eye, intellectually matched? Are you, is your physical energy matching? You know, can you share your deepest thoughts? Do you feel that friendship with that person? Are you strong together? And I'm sorry, do you, does your, can you share that um, your deepest desired thoughts and do you have that friendship and can you be you? It's all one. Those are not separate. And then are you, you know, stronger together and do they magnify each other? And is there harmony when your external relationship and are you, phys- you know, intimacy and sexual matches with one another? Those are very vital things. And yes, this is also part of the book that I'm writing uh, about finding your divine soulmate. Um, it's going to be called, I know the title is going to be Sorry I'm Late. How you know? Sorry, I'm late. I don't know the subtitle part yet. You know, I finally said I do to my. I finally said I do to me. So now I can say it to you. I don't know. I just know it's gonna be sorry I'm late, and that's it's a stupid reason why that's gonna be the title. But I'm gonna let that be the title. Uh, but y'all have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. I hope that this has been helpful to someone, to everyone. Um, not someone, because I hate that little bull. Because I am leaving. Oh, if I help one person, I've done my job. Nope, don't believe in that. Got to help a whole bunch of people. Ain't done your job till you help most other people. So um, I, I know that this is beneficial to some people out there, to a lot of people out there, because you're going to start evaluating people a little bit differently now. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, there's some important key factors. Yeah, he looked good. She looked good. Yeah, she give it to me. He give it to me the right way. But are we friends? Can I share? Can I be just myself? Are our big picture goals the same? Are we intellectually matched? Are our friends, can we our friends hang out with each other? You know, you're going to start thinking about those things in more detail. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing, whether it continues to strengthen your current relationship or makes you realize that you're wasting your time in your current relationship. It's going to help you. And if you have to break up, then so be it. Because like I said, all relationships weren't made in heaven. Trust me, I've seen many made by the devil. So, you know, and I say the devil, use that as a loose term because, of course, to me, I believe the devil is just the negative portions of your brain. Um, But this is going to be part of my book. I hope you guys, um, you know, give me some comments. Let's have a conversation about this down in the bottom. Maybe I'll do this as a question and answer on a live YouTube one day. But let's let's talk about it. Let's let's discuss it because that's another cheap way for me to get y'all to help me in writing this book over the next uh, few months. (laughs) So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Enjoy yourself. You got to free yourself to be yourself because why? Because your greatness is non-negotiable. This has been your Coach Renz and thank you for your support.